Um, we kind of have already gone through it. So if we start back at this molar, I want to rest on each side of the space, and I want to clasp on each side of the space. The clasp will involve the retentive arm and a reciprocal arm. Back here, we've got the uh, mesial occlusal rest. Dr. Smith chose to do his retention on the lingual. That's because mandibular molars tend to cant towards the lingual, and therefore it's usually easier to find an undercut. If you want to use a buccal undercut, you're welcome to use a buccal undercut. You don't have to find the one on the lingual if you happen to have one on the buccal. Whichever side you find retention on, the opposite side is where you want to find reciprocation on. We're not talking about class 1s and class 2s, so we're not talking about RPIs. Because RPIs by definition says it's a mesial rest and a distal guide plane and an eye bar. Okay, if we wanted to use an eye bar up here, we could use an eye bar up here. Would it be an RPI? No, we got a distal rest. It's just going to be an eye bar. And with that kind of an eye bar, we need reciprocation just like we need with an acres clasp or a circumferential clasp. We need something bracing on the other side. So in this case, Dr. Smith used an eye bar, 0.01 inch undercut, bracing arm, Acrylic should extend close to the vestibule. In a class three, it doesn't have to extend as close to the vestibule and have as much tissue coverage, because all we're trying to do is keep the food from getting underneath the partial, because we're not sharing the support with the tissues. We've got plenty of teeth to take care of that. Open lattice, acrylic, Inside, the acrylic does not cross the major connector. This is a minor connector coming up to this, this clasp assembly. We've got a minor connector of the meshwork. If we take our acrylic and we cross the major connector right here, then everything back is a minor connector. And all of these components, which are minor connectors, come off then from a minor connector. You can't do that. So we have to carry this major connector all the way back so that this minor connector comes off from the major, this minor connector comes off from the major, and this minor connector comes off from the major. Because the definition of a minor connector is it's going to join your external components to the major connector. Comes around as a lingual bar, four millimeters wide, three millimeters off the tissue. While I'm talking about it, these little cross marks, which are your tripod marks, the laboratory is going to use them to re relocate, get this cast back in the same orientation that you designed it in. The horizontal line is the one that they're going to use. The vertical line tells them where it's at, and the circle just helps them find it when it gets to the lab. But they have to see that horizontal line very clearly in order to reline it up on the instrument. So those of you that are just kind of making a little smudge there are now seeing that each time we grade one of these we're getting maybe a little bit more picky with you as to how it's supposed to look. Because now we're on our third or so one of these down the line so we're expecting that you know. Unfortunately the further you get down the line the sloppier you get and you start making these little cross marks kind of blend into everything else and then we can't really see them. Remember they have to stay on vertical surfaces. You want three fairly far apart and you want to see the little plus mark. When we come over here, this was an indirect retainer that wasn't necessary. You can put it there, it's not going to hurt anything. Dr. Smith may have been thinking, yeah, I'll put a rest there because then if we ever lose this tooth, I'm one step closer to having this designed the way I need it because then you can actually add a clasp if you need to. If you didn't want to, you would just skirt straight across here and keep right on going. Remember your guide planes need to be in, enclosed within the metal framework and they should be about two to four millimeters in uh, two by four size. They, they will come because they're tooth bound fairly close to the, to the gingival tissues. Same thing here, the acrylic does not cross the major connector. 
open lattice work, acrylic out here on the buckle. I wouldn't do a tube tooth there because I like my tube teeth in very small restricted spots where I'm not going to actually have enough bulk of acrylic for strength. Again, Dr. Smith used an eye bar here, retention on the lingual, reciprocation on the buckle. So in this case, that clasp is totally super bulged. When we go back up to the premolars, he actually found his undercut on the lingual there also, and reciprocation on the buckle. On the other side, he found his undercut out here. I show that to you because you don't have to keep your retention on the same side of the tooth all the way around. Three of these, the retention was on the lingual, bracing on the buckle, and the fourth one, retention was on the buckle and bracing was on the lingual. As long as you have that .01 inch undercut someplace, you're okay. No acrylic down into the vestibule on the lingual. Again, we're not gaining any support from the tissue. It's simply tooth supported. Tomorrow's exam, or not exam, tomorrow's uh, exercise, 100 point exercise that relates to today's 10 point is cast number six. Is that right? Okay, so cast number six is a maxillary. So take a look at it tonight. Think about it so that you can come in and kind of be prepared. Um, the anterior teeth are canines. It's tooth bound, the anterior teeth are canines. So because they're canines, you're going to use eye bars because they're going to be more aesthetic because they're emperor bulge. So they're going to approach from the tissue and not show as much. You'll use a cingulum rest and you'll use a distal guide plane. And then when you come back to the molars, you'll have a mesial rest on both of those uh, guide plane, and you'll have a retentive arm and a reciprocal arm, just depending on which way it surveys out. Your major connector, I would think about and study tonight, or just take a glance at tonight, the palatal strap. Because I think the palatal strap, eight, you're only missing a couple teeth on each side. You've got plenty of support from the teeth. You're you really just need to connect the two sides. Um, I certainly wouldn't do full pallet or AP strap. I would just do a small strap that connects between the two. Doesn't go very far back in the mouth and it's pretty easy for the patient to tolerate. Should have a homework assignment, which you're, like I said, you're just gonna mark off the teeth that you don't have and draw it. It'll be similar to something we have done already because it should just be, I think everybody got some form of a uh, class two with some having various modifications. What's that? Okay, any questions? Did the scores come through on the test yet? No? 